Today we're going to be talking about films that I watched in October. Some of my favorite and some of my not so favorites. And with that we're also going to be discussing films that have come out in October but also films that came out decades ago. I ranked them from my least favorite to favorite and overall I would say it was a pretty good month. But I think hopefully in the future I've seen some more better films that come out. Let's get started on the rankings. My lowest ranking of this month I have The Boogeyman. Way too boring, not enough unique scares or tense moments throughout the film and it seemed like a build-up to the film to reveal the, the creature at the end it felt very predictable next up i have thx 1138 i give this movie around a 7 out of 10 it was pretty average especially for it being george lucas's debut film definitely brought around the discussion around the dangers of sexuality at the workplace and a solid swing with some good performances by robert duvall then we have Saw 10. I've only seen the first Saw film by James Wan and now this one. I enjoyed the, the body horror moments especially when it occurred at the end of this film. And had some pretty good fun moments with an okay setup. Next up is another horror film and that is Five Night at Freddy's. I actually really enjoyed this film despite it having kind of some not so great scores I've seen around the internet now. With the obvious plot twist in the movie which felt like I could see from a mile away. I didn't really play a lot of the video games when they were coming out, but I knew about them enough and when they were popular. I had some decent performances throughout the movie. I didn't find it really scary, but I enjoyed the story for the most part. Now we have No One Will Save You, a new kind of science fiction movie that came out on Hulu I saw a couple weeks ago. Unique look at an alien invasion. I thought it had a really great performance and an innovative use of silence and lack of dialogue, especially throughout the beginning parts of the movie. I really enjoyed the ending sequences even if it left more questions to be answered. I thought it had a few cheesy moments but was overall a very good sci-fi film. Next we have The Ritual and this is more of like a creature horror type movie if you're into that. The film and certain moments of surprise with the use of the memory constantly being implemented in and now on certain scenes. I thought that was very unique. Actors were funny at times but some moments were a bit over the top and they became a bit more annoying. I think the creature looked really dope at the end and I really liked the final 15 minutes of this film. Now we have Fair Play, a movie that came out on Netflix in October. The two main performances I thought in this were really great. I liked how the tension was built around the both characters and kind of a sexual power dynamic. Certain parts in this film felt a little repetitive but I think the relationship between the two was really stood out in this personal thriller. Now the next one might be a little bit controversial with Skinamarink film is not for everybody you have to be willing to imagine a certain type of scenarios throughout the moments of dialogue without ever seeing the characters face to face but the ambiance of the film and how dark the movie looks gives it a documentary quality the final image of the film left me frozen and gave me some great chills and a very powerful lasting image the next one is a film that a lot of people are hating on and that is the exorcist the believer film got a lot of hate a little bit wrongfully. I had a lot of fun with this film. It's not as great as the original but I did enjoy the investigative aspects of the film. I thought it had some of the goofy moments of the original at times but it did suffer with some predictable jump scares. What really kept me in was the final third act. I thought it was twisted enough for me and it kept me engaged. The first Exorcist film felt a bit more worldly and more believable in terms of the religious characters and figures in it. But I think this one takes the approach of, of religion as more of a fanatical sense. And I think that's what really makes some of the characters seem maybe out of place for some people while they're watching it. But I think people like that definitely do exist in this world. Next film is a Japanese horror film, Kwaidan. The set pieces in this film are some of the best, especially for its time. A collection of horror stories with the great use of color. The story of Huichi the Earless told through the artistry of the actual art used in Japan for the battles. And then we kind of get, the, get this great storytelling and use of flashbacks in it as well. Next up is one of the great John Hughes films. And for me, I really enjoyed it, especially for its characters, and that is Pretty in Pink. A great coming-of-age story with characters that feel real and at times quirky in John Hughes's fashion. John Cryer as Ducky kind of felt annoying at times, but I enjoyed the character relationships in this film so much. Especially the one between uh, Harry Dean Stan as the father the main character the relatable situation and discussion around classism and it didn't really feel that heavy-handed another great film i saw in october was animal kingdom a look at a family in the slums especially one that i haven't seen taking part in australia great political intrigue in a family where you cannot trust anybody 
as well as a look at how, where, and who you are raised around strongly contributes to the type of person you become. Another great film is Calvary. Calvary is a great character study with the great Brendan Gleeson, who plays a priest who gets threatened and then has to deal with a community who is then at odds with Catholicism. It also follows the battle with doubt and God. It doesn't feel very heavy-handed of being pro-religion, but it just goes between these themes throughout the movie so well. The supporting characters feel like they are part of the story and they add to it, especially the scenes with the priest when they are one-on-one. -on -one. one of the better films that explores the purpose of religion and how certain scandals can disrupt the town. A film that came out this year is Anatomy of, of a Fall and it's a great thriller and one of the best thriller core dramas I've ever seen on screen. One of the best performances of the year by Sandra Huller. Very well directed, it balances subjectivity and objectivity really well. Adds some really touching moments and highlighted the good and the bad of an entire relationship. Moving deep into the dark moments and a look at how grief can sometimes be manipulated great film that I saw that came out in October is Killers of the Flower Moon by Martin Scorsese. Some of the best and my favorite performances of the year, DiCaprio gives one of his best, if not second best, to The Wolf of Wall Street. Nero, I think, gives an even better performance than he did in The Irishman, and Lily Gladstone is fantastic in it as well. The movie feels like a tragic, twisted love story at its core. Even in his older age, Marty still has it going and it can still make great films. Last and my favorite film that I saw in October was The Red Shoes. I've already made a video about The Red Shoes and why it's so great. A defining film with music and dance but with a great dilemma about having a career or a lifelong partner. The obsessive artist and the mentor following your dreams or are you following another's pursuits? One of the best dance set pieces in all of cinema and one of the musicals where the story comes first with great characters and different motives. Next up, I'm going to be talking about three shows that I watched in October, and one of them is still ongoing. And I'm going to talk about even more in a different video. What I want to talk about that I ended up finishing early in October was Ahsoka. With Ahsoka, I really enjoyed the fantastical elements in this show. It felt like a great blend of sci-fi and fantasy. The most interesting characters I thought were the villains. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but I think this and Endor are steps in the right direction. Next up, I want to talk about Mike Flanagan's new show that came out on Netflix, and that is The Fall of the House of Usher. Hunting of Hill House is still my favorite of his, but this one is definitely second. I love the back and forth storytelling, and Bruce Greenwood and Gina Carano were phenomenal. All characters of the world feel very real, and some episodes were scarier than others, but... With a large cast, I'm impressed he managed to pull this off. The next show I, I want to talk about is the one that I mentioned that I'll make a further and a bigger video about. The next show is called Scavenger's Reign. If you're a fan of Miyazaki's art and worlds, this series is for you. It adds in a dark thriller and sci-fi element which hooked me in the very beginning. And I binged the first six episodes in one sitting. But I'm going to make up an even bigger video about this series and why it's so great. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, me discussing what I watched and ranking what I watched in October. Let me know your thoughts on all the series and films that I watched. Were there some that surprised you that I hadn't seen yet? And were there some that thought that I put too low or too high on this list? Have a good one, and I'll see you on the next one.